Hello world, my name is Angel Moraga, and I will be discussing computer forensics and law enforcement, or CGS 3095. Computer forensic analysis face many challenges in today's world. Many of them are the cloud, training and education, massive data, legal system, and computer forensic. I will go into detail for each one explaining how the challenges can either help or impact an investigation. The cloud, which is the first challenge computer forensic analysis face, is very popular nowadays. As opposed to your old traditional hard drive, the cloud is something that everyone uses to store um, information that they no longer have room for in their physical hard drive. It's something amazing. It's easy. You don't have to worry about losing it. It's a physical hard drive or it getting damaged. You can access it wherever you are, wherever there's internet. But the challenge that computer, computer forensic analysis face is quite daunting. The challenges are Data may be spread, spread across ever-changing sets of hosts and data centers. Records of user activities, temporary files, and other useful artifacts may get lost when the user exits. It's not like in your regular computer where information is stored even though once the computer shut off. In the cloud, <coughs> things are totally different. That information is gone. Jurisdiction plays a big role when it comes to the cloud. Many companies have their servers in remote locations where in their particular location laws might be different. A good example would be if an investigator is investigating a case here in the United States and the server that's involved in that investigation might be, I don't know, somewhere in uh, the Middle East and their laws against accessing information is probably different from here in America. What gives them the ability to want to give us that information or let alone the investigator that information. Bankruptcy is another factor when it comes into collecting data from a cloud. A company might suffer financial loss and all the information that was there might be gone forever without ever giving the forensic investigator a chance to retrieve that information. Chain of custody is another issue. On a standard forensic investigation on a physical drive, there's a chain of command that they must follow. Every step that the hard drive goes through must be documented. But when it comes to the cloud, it's a little harder for it to be implemented. Residual information and a third-party server may be difficult to obtain without a subpoena. Once again, that plays a role in the jurisdiction with the law as well. Without a subpoena or a warrant, there's really nothing a uh, computer forensic can do to analyze it. Training and education. Are computer forensic analysis getting the right education in the right specialty areas? Or are they just going to the classes that the vendors want them to go to? Or are they learning the tools that the vendors want them to learn? Or are they just going with the flow? Continuing with training and education. Most training programs are predominantly certification and vendor focus rather than learning to solve real world problems using broad tools. Fundamental knowledge is inadequate border skills. Some include operating system, like nowadays all the certifications or the teachings that computer forensic analysis might go through, it's all Windows based. Windows, 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 Windows. They really don't focus on Unix, Linux, or Mac OS operating system. What happens if an investigation involves a Mac or something and uh, computer forensic analysis only understands Windows. It's going to be hard 
for the analysis to investigate the whole entire system. And it uses up a lot of resources, time, and money. They also don't teach them system exploitations and countermeasures. Computer forensics should be able to be prepared in case of anything when it comes to hacking into a computer that has restricted access. Another training that they really don't get enough of is incident response. In case of an incident, forensic computer analysis have to be able to know what to do in that situation, which is gather the device, protect the device, and make sure that it follows the chain of custody without it getting stained or damaged or any data being lost. Which in that case, if it is, the whole case could easily be thrown out the window. Intrusion detection is another one that they don't get enough training in. Some analysis don't know how to go about it. Log analysis might be another one that they don't get enough training or education on. Having the ability to go through a computer and its log information not only saves time, but money. They can pinpoint the location where the event happened by just easily looking at the log analysis. Also, reverse engineering plays a major role in their training. With that knowledge, they're able to open the whole entire computer and investigate it with no problem whatsoever. These are the challenges that they face when it comes to training and education. Massive data collection and analysis. <coughs> Nowadays, personal computers come with the storage capacity of one terabyte. A couple of years from now, that could easily jump to five and up to 10 terabytes. That's a lot of space to store information. In. Can you imagine a computer forensic analysis having to go through all that to retrieve information? That can become very expensive and take a long time to collect. Although, in a couple of years, supercomputers are going to be powerful enough to analyze and go through that whole entire data. But as of right now, it's we're not there yet. So that's one challenge that computer forensic analysis have to go through. On a simple 500 gigabyte hard drive, computer forensic analysis take weeks if not months to go through all the information bit by bit let alone a one terabyte hard drive that can take a while especially if the information is deep deep in the system hidden behind files behind files so until that technology doesn't <laughs> counter attack the sizes of the hard drives Computer forensic analysis is going to have to find another way to go through that information. Computer forensics and the legal system. The Fourth Amendment prohibits unreasonable searches and seizures that requires any physical property that one person might own. That includes laptops, PCs, phones, tablets. The cop or a detective can't just go up to you and take your device and say, hey, um, let me search that because I think I might find, find some valuable information against you without a warrant. You have the rights to say, no, I don't think so. Some people might say, yeah, I already know that. What does that have to do with computer forensics? Well, there's also another one that some people might not know, and that's the Fifth Amendment which constitutes, protects a person from being compelled to be a witness against himself or herself in a criminal case. A good example would be, let's say, Bob uh, is crossing state to state and a cop pulls him over. And John has his laptop next to him. And a cop happens to 
inadvertently see something that wasn't supposed to be seen by him. And he asks him to hand over the laptop. John says no. The cop can then go and try to get a warrant or whatever to get the laptop investigated. But John has an encryption on it. And it's password protected. It's going to be hard to decrypt an encrypted drive. You, they could try a brute force, but that's really not going to work. Well, the Fifth Amendment protects John. Because by him giving the passcode to decrypt the device, he is pretty much being a witness against himself. And the Fifth Amendment prohibits that. That he's not obliged to give out that information. So by him not giving that information, those important documents that might be hidden in his laptop will never see the daylight due to the Fifth Amendment that protects John and his rights from being a witness against himself. There's been many cases that have been thrown out due to the Fifth Amendment that poses a really challenging challenge to computer forensics and uh, detectives. Computer forensics and, the, and its future. As I stated earlier, in the future, personal PCs and laptops are going to have a crazy amount of data. 5 terabytes, 10 terabytes. But imagine when they start getting into the petabytes. That's a lot of information that computer analysis have to go through in order for them to find what it is that they need to find. But as I also stated, as hard drive and memory technology advance, so does computer and tools. The forensic field will broaden in terms of expertise. Forensics tools will advance, developing the ability to automate data collection and preliminary processing. Meaning that technology will advance to the point where if a large file is involved in a serious case, forensic analysts will no longer have to sit there going file by file trying to see which one is important and which one is not. With technological advances, they can just simply run the software and configure what it is that they're looking for in a specific location rather than having to go one by one, bit by bit. Also, the scope of computer forensics is starting to be used for non investigating purposes. They're starting to include data mapping for security and privacy risk assessments, as well as automated searches for intellectual property. Not only are forensic computer analysts helping out law enforcement, they're also helping out private companies and customers who want to feel protected. So for the people who think that computer forensics have all these challenges and it's going to be hard for them to be successful in their field. It's really not like how it is. Every field has its challenge. It's just how to overcome it. With the right education and training in a computer field for forensic analysts, they should have the ability to face these challenges head on. In conclusion, do I think computer forensics analysis are useful more in helping out law enforcement or should they diverge into just being like the middleman helping helping out private sectors or consumers, you know, and earn more money? I think they should stick to helping out law enforcement as well more and do the little side gig on the side. Due to the fact that forensic analysis has helped out in many cases, not only in finding frauds from major companies, cyber attacks, even murder cases. There was a good example of this murder case that was solved recently from a serial killer who had killed I don't know how many people and he was 
lose for I don't know how many years. He messed up, and I think he left an email or something, and they were able to track that, and it, it gets crazy. But that was due to a computer forensic analysis who dug deep, found that information, and was able to get it. Just like many other cases. But without the help of those computer forensic analysis guys, many cases uh, would not be able to be would not be able to be solved. That in, that involve digital evidence. There's also digital forensics that deal with um, anything via internet. You know, they solve cyber attacks, cyber crimes. There's also cloud forensics, which deal with the art of the cloud, structures, its data, its mapping, its network, security. The legal system behind that, that I stated earlier, is quite intense. That, by far, is the number one challenge that they really face. But once that law, and they're able to figure out the jurisdiction, I think they'll be able to become quite unbeatable but overall computer forensic analysis and law enforcement together are a very strong team and without them both like I said we'll be lost in this digital world not knowing who robbed from us who stole from us from our bank accounts who hacked into our system or anything like that so to wrap this up I say two thumbs up my name is Jim Raga. This is class CGS 3095. And I am doing a presentation on computer forensics and law enforcement. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed.